Space Shuttle Discovery, the veteran spacecraft of NASA's shuttle fleet, waited on Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to take its final bow, prepared to soar into space for its 39th and final mission. Commander Steve Lindsay, on his fifth shuttle flight and third on Discovery, led the way out of the operations and checkout building where the astronauts donned their orange flight suits. Striding down the ramp and waving to a cheering crowd with Lindsay were pilot Eric Bowe, mission specialist Alvin Drew, Steve Bowen, Nicole Stott, and Michael Barrett. In an extraordinary gesture of respect for each other and the vehicle that will take them into space, the crew stopped for a quiet moment and huddled together before their momentous journey. Go for main engine, go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery, a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Space Shuttle Discovery majestically lifted off the pad at 4.53 p.m. Eastern Time, February 24th, on its STS-133 mission to the International Space Station, its final flight. As the shuttle closed within 600 feet of the space station, it performed its rendezvous pitch maneuver, or backflip. Discovery was the first spacecraft to perform this maneuver on its return to flight STS-114 mission. The backflip gives ground teams in Houston a chance to look over the heat shield to confirm it's in good condition before docking. For the 13th time in its flight history, Discovery was guided gently toward the station's docking port. A warm welcome from the Expedition 26 crew greeted the Discovery crew as they glided into the orbiting outpost through the hatch. The first activity for some of the crew the next day was the installation of the Express Logistics Carrier 4, or ELC-4, onto the station's S-3 truss section. Pilot Eric Bowe and Mission Specialist Alvin Drew controlled the arm from the flight deck of the shuttle, while Mission Specialist Michael Barrett and Nicole Stott manned the controls of the Canada Arm 2 from inside the cupola module to grapple the carrier and move it into position. Drew and Bowen spent the next night camping out in the Quest airlock after breathing pure oxygen to cleanse their blood of nitrogen in preparation for their first spacewalk. After stepping out into space, Bowen, perched at the end of the station's robotic arm, said he got the view of a lifetime before he began working on replacing the ammonia pump. Bowen, who replaced Tim Copra on the mission after a bicycle accident kept him earthbound, was in constant contact with COBRA, who was at Mission Control, helping out from the ground, answering questions and providing input. Back inside the station from his first spacewalk, Drew looked like a kid that had just come back from a theme park. How was it? That was awesome. Oh man, that was great. That views were outstanding. You looked fantastic out there. Nice. Looked totally natural. I was faking it really well. Faking it a little bit? Yeah. All right, go get some food. All right. On Tuesday, Stott and Barrett grappled and lifted the Permanent Multipurpose Module, or PMM, loaded with equipment and supplies, including Robonaut 2, out of Discovery's payload bay, using the station's 58-foot robotic arm, and installed it to the Earth-facing port of the Unity node, completing the assembly of the ISS. After the spacewalk, Mission Control radioed the joint crew members that mission managers had approved an extra day for the shuttle mission to set up the interior of the new permanent multipurpose module. Lindsay and station commander Scott Kelly opened the hatch on the PMM, and after a brief christening ceremony, all of the crew members floated in to the 21-foot-long module. Robonaut 2, still encased in its travel box, was gingerly moved out of the PMM to its storage area and secured in place for future use. Discovery and ISS, please stand by for the President. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mr. President. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, uh, look, I wanted to call and just say how uh, personally proud I am of you and, and all that you're accomplishing. A special long-distance phone call was made from President Barack Obama to the 12 members on board the station, congratulating them on their accomplishments. The entire crew was occupied transferring and stowing thousands of pounds of equipment setting up racks and science equipment. After eight busy but satisfying days aboard the station, it was time for the Discovery crew to leave. Kelly wished them fair sailing, a 
safe trip back to Earth and a warm goodbye to Space Shuttle Discovery and appreciation for its outstanding support of the station. Fond farewells shared, hatches closed, the shuttle undocked with the traditional ringing of the ship's bell. Discovery departing. Commander Lindsay spoke about this final day in space, final voyage for Discovery, and its remarkable history. On this final day on orbit, when I think about Discovery, I think about all that. I think about all the people that went before them, before us uh, on this vehicle, but mostly what I think about are the thousands and thousands of people across the space shuttle program these past 30 years who, who designed this vehicle, built this vehicle, have taken care of this vehicle in operating this vehicle, not just from the cockpit, but also those uh, who operate this vehicle from the ground. And that, that is her greatest legacy to me. A last and a first took place on the same mission when the crew's wake-up song was performed live from Mission Control in Houston by Big Head Todd and the Monsters, singing their song, Blue Sky, on Discovery's last day in space. New song for the world. Good news for Mission Control informed the crew that they were cleared for a deorbit burn on the first landing opportunity at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The day was clear as a bell and picture perfect as Discovery broke through the atmosphere from a brilliant blue sky trailing the twin sonic booms, heralding its approach. Landing for the final time on runway 15 at Kennedy Shuttle Landing Facility at 11.57 a.m. Eastern Time, March 9th, Discovery completed a flawless 13-day mission. To its credit, Space Shuttle Discovery logged an incredible 39 missions, a total of 365 days in space, traveling 148.2 million miles by the end of its remarkable history. And Houston Discovery for the final time, we'll stop. I'm extremely proud of this crew here. Um, my crew did a fantastic job. The ground teams did a fantastic job. We accomplished every objective we set out to do then, and plus a whole bunch more. It was a privilege to, uh, to be able to be in charge of her for just a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm sad to give her back, but uh, I could imagine giving her back into better hands than this group right here.